Good morning and greetings to Hidden Scriptural Truths Revealed. This video deals with the first people to arrive in New Zealand were Egyptians. It, this video will shock archaeologists, academics and the writers of history who we can only assume have been paid to keep them in denial. Professor Paul Moon, Auckland University of Technology, is one who ridicules the story. Fortunate, fortunately, there are many qualified people in international scientific organizations and universities who will confirm the facts that follow. 1. Approximately 725 years after Solomon's ships returned from, with peacocks from Java, the king of Egypt, Ptolemy III, in 232 BCE, commissioned a fleet of six ships to circumnavigate the world. The leader of this expedition would be Captain Rata and his navigator Maui, who was a friend of an astronomer called Aristoteles, being also the head of the Alexandra Library. 2. They left from one of Egypt's harbours and sailed down the Red Sea, crossing the Indian Ocean, making landfall to reprovision the fleet in Java. Unfortunately, rats are known to board ships. As a result, the Polynesian rat called Kiori became an unwelcome passenger. 3. Petroglyphs and ancient Egyptian writings were found in the Cave of the Navigators, Sosera Irian Jaya, in Montpio Bay, West New Guinea. They were deciphered by Professor Barry Fell, a Harvard scholar, as well as an evocation for ancient writings and an epigraphic researcher, telling of the voyage so far. Also found there was Maui's Tanawa or calculator for navigating. From there they continued east through the Torres Strait where they encountered continuous headwinds that decided them to sail down the west coast of Australia to find the westy winds of the Southern Ocean. 4. From 200 kilometres out at sea, the highest mountain in New Zealand is Mount Cook, or Araki, that can be seen sailing from in the wild roaring 40s, they must have thought it a mirage in the clouds and would have over, over, been overjoyed for this landmark that allowed them to make landfall in Bruce Bray on the west coast of the South Island. Today it is called by the Maori Te Tuaraka Waka Ao Maui Marae, meaning the anchorage of Maui's canoe. The Egyptians had arrived from the Southern Ocean and not from the Central Pacific, as thought previously. Leaving Bruce Bay, they went south to, to gain the westy winds and then found the east coast of South, east coast of South, South Island, stopping at Shag River and Kaikoura. Here the Polynesian rats were introduced to the South Island. 6. From Kaikoura, they spotted the mountains of, of the North Island and sailed, sailed crossing Palliser Bay to North Island where they were welcomed by a red-headed chieftain. They travelled north, stopping at Hawke's Bay, and so the Polynesian rats landed in North Island. 7. After New Zealand, they sailed north, calling at Rarotonga, Tahiti and Hawaii. 8. Maui is the second largest island in the group and is named after the famous navigator Maui. It consists of two volcanic peaks, with a valley in between, it is referred to as the Valley Isle. 9. There are many petroglyphs on Maui, as well as the other Hawaiian islands. From Hawaii, they sailed east till they reached San Miguel in Mexico. Its ancient name was Chich y Mica. It was once rich in silver. Then south for 1400 miles, looking for a way to pass through the massive American continent to be able to continue east. Their furthest point in the south was San Fernando. 10. 
A petroglyph was found in a cave in San Fernando Valley, southern Chile, and Barry, Barry Fell deciphered it. It was Egyptian in the Libyan text, and this is the translation of Maui's declaration. Southern limit of the coast reached by Maui. This region is the southern limit of the mountainous land. The commander claims by written proclamation in this land exulting to the southern limit he steered the flotilla of ships. This land the navigator claims for the king of Egypt, for his queen and for their noble son. Running a course of 1,400 miles, steep, mighty mountainous, on high uplifted, August, day 5, regal year, 2, 3, 1. After finding no way through the landmass, they returned west to Polynesia, stopping at Pitcairn Island. 11. On Pitkin was another report that Barry Fell translated. It told of one of Maui's ships that was damaged in a storm. After leaving Pitkin, they travelled, <coughs> they called at Tahiti, and finally arrived in Tonga, where they knew they would be welcomed. Here, they decided not to return to Egypt to face the music for not circumnavigating the world. 12. The Tonga people, being seafarers, had a great respect for Maui's abilities and still today have his star charts. 13. While Maui was now living there, he sailed a thousand kilometers to Uvia, Wallace Island, and brought back some rocks weighing 40 tons. 14. To honor Maui, the people erected an arch of these massive stones, calling it Ha Amonga Ao Maui meaning burden of Maui. To transport such rocks back must have been a burden. Having been settled in Polynesia, we are not sure whether any of his other ships and crews had decided to return to New Zealand and begin colonies. It would appear they did, from the later discoveries that we'll be dealing with. We can be certain that Maui would meet other ships from Polynesia, and Egypt heading to the east, sharing with them the beautiful land to the south, New Zealand. The discoveries in New Zealand. We need to say that in all nations there are chiefs, leaders and people who will fight against truth, even when concrete proofs are given to them. They are more comfortable with inherited traditions that keeps them in denial. Ele <coughs> One. Maori chiefs are called Rangatira. A Maori chief interview, interview, interviewed <coughs> stated Maori was an Egyptian and arrived from the Southern Ocean in New Zealand before anyone else. He was respected as a great sailor and navigator. 2. He showed small statues of Bess, who was worshipped in ancient Egypt as the god of music, merriment and childbirth. He was considered the protector of children and was kept in each household. 3. The Waitangi Treaty that was signed by Maori chiefs admit that the land was populated by someone else before them. The British government acknowledges them and grants them political rights as the only original inhabitants now living. 4. A Maori chief stated that the ancient legendary home of the Maori was the island of Hai Wai. Key. 5. The new name of Hai Waiki is Rai A Tia Te and lies in the southern group of islands. 5. A survey done on the Kiore Rats introduced by Maui ships shows that the oldest MT DNA rat lines are in New Zealand as expected. Ancient mobility of the rats through the Pacific is in accordance with Maui's expedition. 7. The National Academy of Science of the USA shows how the Kiori rats were distributed around Polynesia. Prof uh, Professor Lisa Matisu Smith of Biological Anthropology at Otago University confirms these findings and is backed up by an extinction biologist, Dr. Richard Holdaway, 
His main research is to find when the first predators arrived in New Zealand. And his research states it was 2,000 years ago, which goes against the accepted dogma that the rights arrived with the first European settlers about seven to 800 years ago. Naturally, the government employed and paid Brooks MacBadgen to bunk this proof, questioning the carbon dating. You will read about the same man regarding his comments on the age of the Kaimana War. However, Richard Holdaway put him in his place when he pointed out that a cave in Hawke's Bay had been filled with volcanic ash that had buried the contents of the cave. This was from the massive Taupu eruption 1800 years ago. After removing the ash, a rat bone was discovered in the earth, indicating the rat had died before the eruption. 8. Elsden, Best and Percy Smith were two ethnographers, that is a branch of anthropology doing the systematic study of individual cultures. Both were prominent academic proponents of pre-Maori settlement. <clears throat> 9. The Kai Mana War is found to the south of Lake Taupo and is a remnant of ancient human construction built about 2,000 years ago. The Maori could not have built it because they did not build in such a way and they only arrived in the land 800 years ago. The joints are so accurate resembling Egyptian workmanship and is semicircular, indicating that it was part of a building. This sign, written by government stooges, terrified that Egypt will have land claims against the New Zealand government. It reads as follows. Kaimana Rock Formation The rock formation has been scientifically established to be part of a large ignimbrite outcrop formed naturally 330,000 years ago. This rubbish was written by the government employed Bruce McFadgen at the Department of Conservation's Science and Research Department. Nature must have been more advanced than humans 330,000 years ago, years ago to be able to form perfectly dressed stones. Money blinds and corrupts people. The sign ends. It is an offence under the Conservation Act to interfere, interfere or damage natural features on public conservation land. Please respect and do not disturb the site. 10. Petroglyphs showing a bow and arrow used in hunting that the Maoris never used. They fought hand to hand, used a fighting staff, a tahai, aha, spear or a club. 11. In a cave at Dargaville is an engraving of a large rock that archaeologists have determined is an ancient Greek celestial calendar. 12. Also at Dargaville, near Waimatinu, is the Tutumor Range, <coughs> 25 miles southwest west of Kaikoui, is a spiral stone carving weighing several tons, nicknamed Stargate. Noel Hillam of Timepiece states it is a Phoenician sundial. 13. At Ragland are 27 basalt boulders, boulders with hieroglyphics that do not match any Maori carvings. They are similar to hieroglyphics found in the cave of the navigators in Western, New in Western Guinea, where Maui stopped. One rebus, shaped like a reversed Y, is found as the letter D in Phoenician writing from 1000 BCE. Another inverted Y is also the Sumerian script for bread. Before the uh, uh, Europeans arrived, the Maori had no form of writing. Recently, some Maoris in denial tried to hide and destroy them. The government, to be politically correct, did not intervene. 14. At Waipua Forest, far north on the west coast of North Island, bordering the sea, is packed with ancient rock structures. A detailed map was drawn up listing the sites and positions of incised obelisks, petroglyphs of a ship with masts, standing so stone circles, and circular stone mounds.
there are 200 structures on 600 sites covering 500 acres. Also deep fissures in rocks that could be a type of petroglyph. Ruins of beehive houses, dwellings common in ancient times, and stone-lined waterways. A detailed map was commissioned giving the description and position of all the discoveries. But this was sent away and remains hidden. New Zealand's condemn the government. A quote, when history is used as a political tool, falsified, hidden or withheld, that's how governments manipulate solid architectural anthropology research because it does not suit the agenda of the day. 15. At Haak Haingo are sculptured earth mounds, a village square, lots of collapsed hobbles, beehives, nearly all covered with earth, but one can still see the tops, lines of the arrangements of a stone settlement, a hovel-domed village, complete with two amphitheatres and a stone watercourse. Please note, the Maori people tell us they did not form these rock complexes and stone layouts that litter the land. 16. At Kangora, rock carvings is found 10 kilometres west of Marupara on North Island. They are unlike any Polynesian canoes. Minagati, Manawa, local people, found them in 1926 and claim to know nothing about them. 17. Wotan spoke of fair-skinned people with blue eyes who sold, sailed west from South America. In New Zealand, the Maori peak people talk about an ancient people called the Patapure, living in the mountainous area of South, South, uh, South Island. Originally, they coexisted with the Maori. They had fair hair, skin, and had blue eyes, and lived in round stone hilltop forts. A 70-year-old Maori woman, Monika Matamua, is an ancient descendant. Her DNA is the same as that found in DNA from Peru. They taught the Maori to weave, arts, crafts and carving. We feel that the above is compelling evidence that the Egyptians and Phoenicians had numerous colonies in New Zealand long before the Maori arrived, approximately 700 years ago. We can understand why friction still exists, considering history. 1. 2,000 years after the Egyptians had discovered New Zealand, Captain, Captain Cook lands in 1769 and his arrival was a disaster for the Maori people. 2. Britain forces voices regret over Captain Cook's Maori killings. 3. This, would, this was followed by the New Zealand Wars, commonly called the Land Wars or the Maori Wars. The Maori lost their land through a combination of private and government purchases, confiscation of 400 million acres between 1865 and 1890. Later, a further 8 million acres passed to European ownership. The, the government has some form of conscience, with the late Queen Elizabeth apologising to the Maori people on her visit in 1995. The Guardian reported, Britain's half-hearted apology isn't good enough. It is clear that the true ancient Egyptian Phoenician discoverers were only interested in trading and peaceful discovering. The New Zealand government tries to hide archaeological discoveries with the ridiculous statements they make. Shalom. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please share it. If you have any comments to make that will help us with further research, please let us know.